Click Scheduling in Synchro. Scheduling Preparation. The first thing a scheduler usually does for a schedule is to change the data date. So in Synchro, you can go to Navigator, Project, and then change the project data date. This is usually the report date of your schedule or how the schedule is calculated based on. The second thing you may want to change in Synchro is project date zero. And then you will customize the columns that you want to see or display in Synchro. Usually we want to see um, ID, name, duration, start, finish, um, predecessor, calendar, and total float. And then you can always save the layout as um, a project layout or a global layout. For a project layout, it's only visible for this project. For a global layout, you can apply the global layouts to any of the Synchro project. Also, you can go to um, Navigator, Calendars, to make your own calendar. You can also right-click to set up the set the calendar as the default project calendar, and then right-click on the date to set it as non-working day or normal working day. You can also edit work hours and calendars. Next, we're going to talk about populate schedule tasks. It's very easy uh, to populate schedules in Synchro. You can directly type in those cells to add new tasks or edit uh, names or task IDs. You can always indent to make the created tasks as child tasks. You can also right click to choose um, collapse all so that you can view the schedule um, at parent task level. Then you can keep populating um, activities this way uh, while adjusting the WBS structure at the same time by using indent and outdent. Now we've just created a task called Foundation SOG Slab on Grade. And then we are assuming here that the foundation work of this project will be broken into three work zones. We're going to work on P5, work zone P5 first, and then um, cover the rest of the uh, scheduling basics in Synchro this way. In addition, you can always use copy and paste to bring information from Excel to Synchro to keep populating tasks. Columns in Excel match those in Synchro exactly, and logic ties or relationships are defined by the predecessor columns, and then they're all assumed to have finish to start relationship. You can also indent multiple tasks to make them child tasks, and then choose to display links on screen. Then collapse activities for error 1 to the parent task and copy and paste the parent task along with all the links. Rename this task to error 2, then expand it. Replace task 1 included in all error 2 task names. Then do the same thing to duplicate repeated tasks for area 3. Then replace task 2 included in area 3 task names. Then we can link the first tasks of area 1, 2, 3 together by select all of them one by one, right click to link as chain. So let's keep populating activities or tasks in Synchro. You can always use hotkeys. Uh, in this case, we're all, we are using Control, Shift, and I to create um, multiple new tasks. You can drag down to fill the task names. And then also drag down duration uh, to make the durations all the same. You can select multiple tasks in order, uh, choose the link type, and then right click to link them as chain. You can show critical path on screen by go to Home Ribbon, Compute Critical Path. 
and also click on reschedule report you will be able to see all the information for the report and then paste the information into word document Now let's assume your schedule is ready to be printed. Before we print the Gantt chart out, we can um, customize our Gantt chart to make it prettier. You can go to Navigator, Task Statuses. This is where you can change the color of the bars. Right now we're going to go ahead and then change the color of the um, bars for those planned tasks. If you want to customize the color of your critical path, critical tasks, and then critical links, you can simply go to Home Options, Expand Gantt Chart, and then go underneath Colors, Find Critical Path, and then you will be able to define your own outline and if infill for both critical tasks and critical links. At the same time, you want to turn off the float bars in the Gantt chart. So you will right click, find the keyword float, and then turn off all the float options here. And then now you can see all the bars related to float has been turned off. So now our schedule is ready to be printed out. So the first thing we do is that we go into File and then go to Print Setup. You can choose the printer you want or simply choose Adobe PDF to print it as a PDF file. For paper size, we choose Tabloid. In Orientation, we choose Landscape. Hit OK to exit. And then we go to Print Preview to look if we missed anything. Sometimes the task name column is not wide enough to display all the information and the task names are cut off. What do we do? Let's close print preview first. If the content in the columns are cut off, we can simply go to home options, expand Gantt chart, and then the second item from the list is printing an AVIX word. That's because you probably had the auto size column width option turn on. Synchro uh, usually automatically um, calculates the column width for you, but right now we don't want the text to be cut off, so we turn that option off. And then hit OK. Also, you can adjust the font size of the header of your Gantt chart. Right now in Print Preview, you can see the task name column is properly displayed. Let's say the schedule is ready to be printed out. If you go to File, Print, and then choose um, the second tab, which is Layout, you will be able to define the date range by selecting From and To Dates. Also, you can define the horizontal and vertical pagination here. If you switch to the third tab, which is Legend, you will be able to add additional information of this project. So here, you can type in the project title, program title, the name of the client, revision number, revision comments, etc. You will also be able to change the logo uh, to your company's logo. Okay, now let's preview again. It seems that the start and finish dates are cut off for some reason. So let's turn it off and then go back into your schedule and then expand the columns width of the start and finish columns. Right now in the preview, everything looks fine. 
one more thing is that you may want to sort your schedule by the start date. Now let's go to File, Print, and then select Adobe PDF and then save the file in the folder. A schedule has been successfully printed.